Hello and welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. Today we're going to play with Flux. Flux is this great stuff that makes it a lot easier to solder. You put it on your, your pads and your board and your chip and the solder flows better. And depending on the solder, it also has a, a little bit of acidity or it's a little bit corrosive to help clean off any oxidation on, on the pads or on the board. And that helps the solder stick better too. We've got five types of flux here. We've got uh, brush on liquid fluxes like this. Uh, a syringe, this is my favorite, this was a freebie from Farnell. And then this is a pen or marker, these are common, you see these a lot. Uh, this is a no clean flux from Kester, I got this from SparkFun, I detest this, I, I, don't, I think it's worthless. And then also we have this wild card, which is sort of a rosin based flux that a reader from Spain sent in. So we'll be trying this one today too. We're going to be testing the fluxes with our QFP proto board. This is a board we made to help prototype circuits using surface mount parts. Uh, it's got an area for a QFP chip. This one's 0.5 millimeter pitch. We've pre-soldered a PIC microcontroller on there and just here in one edge and the other. We'll try a little bit of flux along each side and test each one out. Uh, and then over here we have resistors and capacitor area. We'll solder some 0805 resistors on there with each flux. Uh, the breakout board also has more parts. Uh, it's got a place for SOIC chips, a uh, breakout area to just generally connect everything up or do other experimenting. Uh, we really like these. We use it to prototype a lot of our stuff before we actually commit it to a circuit board. First up, before we actually use any flux, I'm going to solder a resistor on and solder a little bit of the chip using no flux. I'll get this camera set up and zoomed in really close so you can see how it goes. We'll see if we even need the flux at all. First I'm going to solder an 0805 resistor with no flux. I'm going to put it on this pad right here. Uh, there's no flux on this board, but I'll add a drop of solder to one side so that it's easier to get started. Reheat the solder. Drop the part on. Now we just come by and finish up the other side. Even without flux, an 0805 is really doable. But now we'll go over and try a few of the QFP chip pins without any flux too. It's kind of a mess. We got sort of a gob. You see just a lump of it on there. If we had a little bit of flux that would flow around better and it wouldn't be such a mess. Still, I think we can probably wick it up. Yeah, now that we've wicked it, it's actually a clean enough join. You could live with that. It's a little messier than I'd like, but totally doable. Now as a comparison, I want to show you how the syringe flux works. This is Edson. Uh, this is a freebie I got from Farnell. I don't have any particular preference on a syringe flux. I just like it because it's a little bit thicker and uh, one tube lasts forever. My last tube went five years or more and then I actually passed it on to somebody else when I got this one instead of getting rid of it. Uh, so it's still going strong. Just gonna put a little bit of dot, a little dot of flux on each pad here in the resistor area. That's more than enough. I'm gonna come by with my solder and put a dot of solder on first, just like last time. And then I'll lift a 0805 resistor into place. Okay. Now we'll come back and solder the other side. Again, not very bad. It, it wasn't difficult. I think on 0805 it's not as necessary, but the solder did go on a lot easier. It's a bit quicker to make that join. Now we'll come back over 
do the QFN chip and try it out here. Just put a little bit of flux along this edge on these pins. And then we'll solder that. Okay, now we've got too much solder on here, uh, and it's go bunched up and we'll still have to use a little bit of solder whip to get rid of it, but you can see already that where we use the flux, it's actually, it's not joined together, there's no bridges on the chip. Where we did without the flux, it was bridged right away, and we had to wick it up to get that effect. But with the flux, even though we just kind of drag soldered along, there's, there's way fewer shorts and it's a lot cleaner join. Now let's let's compare the syringe flux, which is my favorite, to this Kester no clean marker. So what I don't like about this is it may uh, remove some corrosion from the parts and uh, clean up the part and make it, the solder stick better, but it lacks the viscosity to help the solder flow well, especially when you do drag soldering like we do and you have to suck up the extra solder when you're done. Uh, this kind of solder doesn't help with that. So let's try this out on the 0805 resistor and a little part of the QFN chip. We just push the marker down to make it flow. You see actually there we just got a ton of flux came out. So It's not nearly as clean as the others. Uh, the solder didn't flow as nicely. Now let's try the marker on the QFP chip. We'll use this side up here at the top. That way we're comparing it to the same type of soldering over here. Push down to make sure we get plenty of flux. And now I'll keep that aimed towards the camera. There, I don't know if you can see, but that spits a lot, throws up a lot of fumes, and uh, the joint is just miserable. The solder is globbed up there all over the place. It didn't flow around at all. So while it might have cleaned up the, it might have, while it might have cleaned up the leads, it didn't actually help the solder flow, which is really what we need. We've got two types of liquid flux, but this one's lead free. So we're going to try the one Shock picked up in Japan. We'll brush a little bit on and then try it out on all the parts. That worked adequately. I'm happy with it. Uh, it would, worked about the same as using no flux, but it wasn't as good as the syringe. It went on really smoothly and wicked up really quick. Very nice. Shock, you're not going to get this back. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it. For our final flux, we've got this paste that came to us from a reader in Spain. It doesn't have a brush, so I'm just going to use a toothpick here to put a little dot on either side of that pad. And actually, these are getting a bit crowded, so I'm going to use this pad instead. Exactly the same, just a different place. Well, that worked quite nicely. Nothing wrong with that. Now we'll try it on the QFN. We'll use the second half of the side of the IC. It's 
probably way too much, but it's okay. I'll turn it so you can watch. Well, that worked really well. I think this is a rosin based paste. It's nice and thick. It really helps the solder flow and get to where it needs to be and keeps it from sticking in between the pins. Well, those are the four types of flux we had around the workshop. A liquid, something in a syringe, a paste, and a marker. Of the four, I think I still like the stuff in the syringe the most. It puts out the least fumes and really the solder flows quite nicely. Shock's liquid flux really gave it a run for its money though. Uh, that solder joint was really nice and really clean the first time with no problems, even on a very difficult place to solder on a small pitch chip. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. I think we're going to show you how we do our free PCB uh, Sunday packing. Maybe something else. We'll find out. Sorry, one more thing. If you'd like this experimenter board with the PIC 18 f soldered on it, post a comment below. We'll give it away to a random person tomorrow. Thanks for watching.